Two at Massive Win on Wednesday night. How has the atmosphere been around the club, been around the, the dressing room a few days after? Yeah, there's been an obvious feel-good factor. Um, I think just when you've earned the three points as we did, it was hard fought, it was it was difficult in stages, it was a challenge. I thought we acquitted ourselves really well, um, given the challenge. Yeah, but naturally when when the final whistle goes, you get into the dressing room, people feel good, they feel that they've, that they've done so many good things in the game and they've approached it exactly how they were asked. Um, and then again, watching the boys coming in again this morning, they, they rightly feel good about the work that they've done. Um, I think you almost need to put a full stop on that, take lots of the good aspects, but we now need to think about what we approach on Sunday and the challenge that awaits us on Sunday, which is going to be really difficult. You know, I've, I've again, I've made no secret of, of how good I think Hearts are. Um, I think they're. It's a completely different game for me to plan. Um, it's a it's a different game for the players to approach. And I think you just go and embrace that next challenge. But I think it's slightly different from Monday past, where you come in, you've lost out in the Scottish Cup. There's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of doom and gloom. And now you go and face a game on the Sunday where um, you've won and you've proved to yourself that you can get out on the pitch here at First Park and you, and you can get that result. So um, I, I would be disappointed if anyone was coming in with any apprehension. I think you just got to embrace the next challenge. Will you be in charge on Sunday? And if so, how confident are you that? you can repeat the feet you did on Wednesday if, if you have to deliver a different game plan. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's been made very clear. I've had a conversation with the, with the board and they've asked me to take the game again on, on Sunday. So, again, that makes it really clear for the players and for everybody that surrounds the football club. And it's kind of been broke up into two chunks, hasn't it? If you think that, you know, a couple of days preparation for St Byrne, then it'll be exactly the same for Hearts, which it would be the same for any manager. Let's not let, let's not kid ourselves. You know that that's how you, you would approach it. Um, but that wee bit of certainty is there, and, and we know what we're going to do for the next couple of days. What happens thereafter? Again, I'll be brutally honest with you guys. Um, I don't know, um, and there hasn't been a an official decision made on that. But again, that's fine for me. It gives me an opportunity just to go through the next couple of days and, and understand what kind of benchmarks we need to hit, what milestones we need to hit, what kind of information needs to come across and the demands that we need um, returned from the players and, and that'll be fine, we'll approach that in terms of confidence and how much we think we can have an impact, yeah of, of course you do, we just said it there uh, a minute or so ago that y you have to approach this with confidence, you have to believe in yourself um, but listen, we're under no illusions that it's going to be a very very difficult game, uh, I've watched Hearts on a number of occasions this season, I really admire how they play, I really like how they play um, there's a lot of good players, There's they have a good manager quite clearly, all, all those aspects come into it, um, but again it's it, it's another challenge that, that you have to enjoy uh, taking on, meeting head on I think the teams have met twice already this season if we want to kind of cast our memory back I think one was a defeat here where Motherwell played very, very well. So those things can be forgot about as well. You know, I think Motherwell lost the game maybe 3-0, um, but were very, very good in the game. And it sounds ridiculous when you've lost 3-0, but they were. And then there was also a game at Tynecastle where, where Hearts were, were reduced to 10 men and, and Motherwell, you know, created a number of chances and, and, and potentially could have got something out of the game. So as good as they are, we've already shown this season that we, we, we can match them in certain aspects of the game. Just finally, for me, when we spoke to you on Tuesday, you said that you weren't necessarily going to put yourself forward for the job, but if it was offered that, that you'd be interested. Is the start still the same? Has it changed since Wednesday's game? Do you feel that perhaps another big win here on Sunday would, would help your case? Are you thinking about that at all? No, again, I, I felt it was possibly misquoted. Um, I don't know whether it was some headlines or whatever, but I felt it was misquoted. I need to make this abundantly clear that if the football club thought that I could help them, moving forward and I could make something better or I could make improvements or get results then I would be more than happy to have a conversation you know that's what it is I mean a conversation that doesn't mean that that goes you know with, with me becoming the manager it doesn't mean that then flips back to somebody else becoming the manager I'm only saying that I, I would have a conversation naturally and it would just be a layer or two on to what's already been had in terms of trying to prepare a team that there's no guarantees that would filter out of that I wouldn't be looking for any guarantees um, but the most important thing for me and I'm, and I'm not saying here trying to portray myself as the biggest clubman ever you know I was with a previous club I think I've come into a football club for a few months um, but I want the best for this football club and I want the best for the group of players and the staff that are run about so um, that's the situation that I find myself in. Interviews have, have taken place by other candidates at the moment have you been officially interviewed or do you see 
you know, the next couple of weeks has, has almost your interview for the job. <laughs> there's, there's been no interviews um, again from my from my situation. I've been pretty busy. I don't know if you know. Over the last couple of days, there's been a lot going on in terms of preparing the team and and now looking forward towards Hearts. So that that situation hasn't appeared, and um, I'm I'm not expecting anything moving forward. My focus has to be on trying to make sure that we're right and we can we can acquit ourselves right on Sunday. How much have you enjoyed being back in the dugout? I've loved it. I've just said that there. I, I, I love a challenge. I love a challenge. I think a lot of people speak in, in football about we really enjoy a challenge, and um, I, I, you know, I want to be in the mix, and I want to do this, and I want to do, it, or, or I can do this, or I can do that. I've loved the challenge, and I always have done. Um, go back to being a player, or go back to being uh, a coach and a manager sometimes in these positions, I probably relish that more. You know, I've been in a position of trying to win a league before and that's a different challenge and a different pressure. Um, but I can honestly say I've always relished being a, you know, in a, a, potentially in a relegation situation as a player, coach or manager. I've always really enjoyed the, the, the challenge that comes with it. So, yeah, no, no doubt about it. I, I think I'm a pretty enthusiastic guy. Um, and from that point of view, then no, nah, it's it, it's been great, and it's it's one of those ones where who knows where it goes moving forward. But the one thing that I know was I came in here with a job to do, and I came in with equal enthusiasm to do that. we working with the 18s in the reserves, so that's not going to change for me one way or another. A lot of names flying around, obviously headlines, social media, and whatnot. How easy is it to keep the players focused on the job at hand and not look to? outside factors and outside media reports? I think, I think it's very easy. I, I, I go back to the very basic <clears> principles. Um, I'm not a social media guy, so most of that would go over my head. I know the players can be a wee bit different, um, but I think that it's your job to come in here and prepare to try and play in the next game of football. So all the external factors for me don't become a part of it. Um, I don't believe that I have to remind anybody of that factor either. Um, as I say, if I can simplify it and break it down to what we need to do in the next couple of days and make sure that the players are as focused as they were in the last couple of days leading up to St Mirren, then there's absolutely no concerns or no issues from my point of view. Those stories and those other aspects that you refer to um, are for other people above my station and people above me at the football club and the players to, to go ahead and deal with. Was it important then that you got that certainty that you will be in charge of dugout? On, I assume it was Wednesday night you get told that, that and then the players can just completely focus on, on the game rather than you know getting surprised on Saturday when somebody's announced it. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I think that that is important because players are a creature of habit. They like to know what they're coming into each day and, and they like to know what the, um, the situations are that they're going to face. Um, I think we can look right across the board. I think you can find any player that wants to be walking in every day with uncertainty of maybe who's going to be in charge or where you're training, what you're doing, that type of thing. So yeah, I think that that is important that there's that there's a level of continuity, but it's a very very short term continuity that we can give them just now. Um, but I think we're all in an understanding. Everybody sitting here knows that that's the situation that the football club's in just now, um, and and no doubt the guys uh, at the top of the tree will want to try and get some sort of clarity on that and, and, and some sort of way of moving forward as quick as they possibly can. So that's fine, we can't affect that just now, but all we can affect is, is ensuring that the players understand what's expected of them in the short term. Have you seen a, a kind of a relief, a lightness maybe about them that they wasn't there at the start of the week because they got that win, that kind of monkey off their back? Listen, I think there's always a, a relief when you when you win, especially when you've been on a bad run, but I, I, I didn't also see people hiding in, in the days leading up to St Mirren either, you know, so you, you can see that where, you know, guys maybe not putting their hand up to come forward and play and maybe not wanting to see if they, they pitch themselves into a dif difficult situation. So I've never seen any of that, but undoubtedly there's going to be a, a renewed confidence um, off the back of a win against a, what I think is a very good Premiership side in St Mirren um, and that has to give them a springboard and a belief to, to face the next uh, the next challenge, which is which is Hearts on Sunday. So, yeah, it helps them, um, but again, you have to come back to the fundamentals and, and the work ethic and the... Um, the, the wee bit of cohesion that we had for a couple of days, we need to come back to all of that again today and make sure that we're, we're ready to go. Are you sure. going to look back at results, Stuart? Like, you mentioned the Hearts game here a couple of months ago, Motherwell played really well. You want to kind of refer back to that to the players to remind them that a good performance can be put on against a team like us? Nah, again, again you need to be ca we need to kind of be careful about that in terms of the personnel that played in it. I know what you're saying, I understand what you're saying. I'm just a little bit of a football geek, so I look back on these types of things. So probably in my head, I'll look at you know what happened in previous encounters, what players had an effect on games, and uh, both on their side and on our side. Um, but I don't think it's something that I have to really go over too much. I think, again, if 
I, I sort of, I apologise, but I maybe sound like a broken record. All I can refer to just now is what's happened in the in the last few days. That's all I can really go back to and and, and refer to just now. The rest of it for me is maybe a little little coaching points and little aspects that I can think of in my head and areas that I fi feel that when these two sides meet and certain players meet, then that may have an impact on it. So it probably more focuses around me than than anything else. Has the win on Wednesday changed anything for you? Has it given you more of an appetite for this? Uh, no, no, because um, again, I think anybody that knows me, I'm kind of involved in football 24-7. I think that I'm out watching games, doing bits with the media, working with an 18s group, working with a reserve group, so it centres around my life anyway. It's just a different aspect that's been put into it. The one bit that, that you'll never replicate, and I, and I probably found the other night, which which is great, it's, it's good for everybody, it's good for uh, staff at the football club, players, supporters, is when the referee blows the, the final whistle, it's that feeling that you get, you know, when you've got three points and in the fashion that we were able to do it, we were able to achieve it. That that that's the greatest feeling you'll ever get. And it's when you finish playing, you talk about the adrenaline of winning trophies. We've been fortunate enough, fortunate enough to do that and that feeling. When you get into coaching management, it's the same feeling. But sometimes it even just centres around just winning a three points. So that aspect was was great on Wednesday. But again, I, th I also feel that I'm very level headed, and we tried to get that from the players as well. That it's one ninety minutes, it's one game of football. That feeling was great. Can we go and get it again as quick as we possibly can? And we're fortunate that we've got another game uh, sort of three four days later. And, and and I think that that's brilliant. I think it's great. We don't want to wait another week to uh, to be going get a game. The one gave the whole town a, a massive boost. How much of a boost would it be again on Sunday if you could take three points? Yeah, it goes without saying. It goes without saying. I think you you want to try and find a run. You want to try and find yourself in a position where you can go and mount some sort of one run. Um, we also look at the league table. The fact that you go to ninth, you want to try and see if you can improve on those numbers in terms of your points tally, your goal difference, and all of that. So there's a number of different factors you look at. But from a very simple sense, you want to win every game. But that's not been any different since the start of the season. Nobody's been going out there trying to lose games of football or not trying to have a good home record. Um, it's just getting that feeling, trying to harness it and and, and go again and see if you can add to it as, as quick as you possibly can. How's the squad injury wise? Know, yeah, we might we might have one or two um, available. We just have to wait and see. That is, there's fine lines with that. There's guys that have been out for a period of time, so we just have to wait and see. And I would be hopeful that we could maybe add one or two to the squad. Um, but again, that that is really going to be touch and go. Other than that, you'd be looking at a very very similar squad that we that, that we started the game with against the month.